If you look at bassists who do a ton of slapping who are at the very top of the game, you'll notice something about their right hands, their slapping hands. Check out the way Victor Wooten uses his right hand. Or someone like Mark King. Or guys like Marcus Miller. Now compare those to players like Flea. Or Brian Bella. Or Rob Trujillo. It's very different, right? Now what's going on here? Hi, I'm Luke from Become A Bassist, and in this lesson, you're going to learn all about the rock slap bass technique, how you can use it for yourself, you're going to learn a song with it, plus two reasons you absolutely should use this technique, plus two reasons you absolutely shouldn't. Welcome to Become A Bassist, where it's all about insanely practical, no BS bass lessons designed to get you playing better bass, having more fun, and becoming the best bassist you can be. And today, it's all about slap. Now, what did you notice about all those examples I showed you? I can tell you what I noticed. In the, the Victor Wooten, the Mark King, the Marcus Miller examples, their thumbs were roughly parallel to the strings they're playing. Right? In Mark's, Mark King's case, his elbows like drop down like this, his thumb almost faces up, right? And the other three guys, Flea, Brian Bella, Rob Trujillo, all their thumbs were playing kind of perpendicular to the strings. They were slapping across the strings rather than through them. And this is a super common thing for rock bassists uh, to do. And we'll get into the reasons really soon. But right now though, I want you to just grab your bass and just try out this technique with me. So the first thing you want to do is put your thumb at roughly like a 90 degree angle to the string like this and just come back a little bit, give it a good old slap. Now, importantly, you want to bounce off the string. You don't want to hold your thumb down too hard. You know, just a quick cobra strike and then back out. Yeah, now you don't have to be exactly at 90 degrees to the string. You can come this way a little bit if you want, so you're kind of at more of an angle. That's totally fine. That works just as well. Uh, and for your popping, you can either use your index or middle fingers. And the trick here is to find somewhere that you can actually, you know, get up under your strings and pull them with enough force that you get that good solid rock pop. Yeah, or rock solid pop, I should say. Now, for me, the best place is right in between my neck and my pickup right here. I've got all this space. I can get underneath all the strings with either finger. It's totally fine. Now, back here is also an option in between uh, my two pickups right here. I can get under the strings there, but there's a bit more tension back there, so it's much easier to do it up here. And, you know, you may also find that to pop, it's almost like you end up using your wrist to kind of, you know, use as a leverage point. So the wrist goes down, fingers come up. So you see Rob Trujillo do this sometimes. He kind of pivots at his wrist to pop, and it works really well. Just remember, you want to stay as relaxed as possible and as loosey-goosey as possible when you're doing this. So thumb at an angle, cobra strike, down, back straight off, and then to pop, You may even find that you end up kind of uh, slapping on the actual uh, neck itself. So you can actually get under the strings right there. That's totally fine. As long as you're getting that nice solid slap sound, you are all good. Next, let's try a song using this uh, rock slap technique. If you've ever heard the Red Hot Chili Peppers cover of Higher Ground, then you'll know this song. Uh, as far as notes, this bass line is relatively simple. The only notes we're using here are the open E, then the octave E, second fret on the D string, then G, third fret on the E string, then fifth fret on the D string, and then A's, fifth and seventh frets on the E and the D strings. Now, the notes are easy. The right hand uh, is what this is going to work, right? So we're starting with a big fat low E, then almost like a half muted E before we get our first pop on our high E. So we get, yeah, you can play that as like a real note as well. That works as well, or you can kind of half mute it. 
that'll also work. But then we get this. One last low E and then two low Gs slapped and then one high G popped. Then to finish off that first phrase, we have the same exact thing, two frets above. Yeah, so the first half of the phrase. Yeah, just like that. Always making sure our thumb stays, you know, perpendicular to the strings, or at least relatively perpendicular. Now the second half of the phrase is almost identical, it just changes at the very end. So we get the E's and G's are the same. But then when we get to the A, instead of going low, low, high, we get low, high, low. Yeah, so the whole thing's super slow. Actually, I'll just do that second half of the phrase altogether. Yeah, low, high, low, right there. And then the whole thing. And then it repeats over and over and over again. So let's do the whole thing at a bit of a slower tempo. Four. Pretty sweet, right? Uh, and by the way, if you want these the tabs and tracks I'm using for this bass line, I'll put them up on the site for free, so just click the link in the description and I'll send you everything I'm using here. And you can start practicing this technique, but let's do this one more time at performance tempo. just over and over again. Of course it changes uh, in the rest of the song, but that's the basic idea. Now, could you play this exact same thing with the other technique? Of course you could. Yeah? So why would you do this instead of doing in this? Yeah? Now, there are two main reasons. First, let's talk about the sound. Now, there is a very, very subtle but very important difference in the sound of each of these different techniques. Check it out. If I play with the, you know, standard technique, there's a certain sound. But if I play with the rock slap technique, it's a little bit different, right? With the rock slap technique, there's a tiny bit more attack. Uh, there's a bit more high end in the sound and you, you know, you can get really aggressive with it, which is great for rock music. If you're battling, you know, two super distorted guitars plus a loud drummer, you know, you need to be heard crystal clear. Uh, and if that's what you need to do, then it's a no brainer to do what you can to get a little bit of extra edge so you can be heard. And playing with this, the rock slap technique, it does give you a bit of an edge. The second reason is the issue of what's most comfortable. If you spent years playing with this kind of technique, it's going to be way more comfortable than trying to, you know, relearn how to slap, right? And since tons of bassists, like I did this, I saw Flea playing and all these other rock guys, and I just tried to copy them, uh, and you know, people do this and they end up using this technique, and that's fine. It's not like, like playing like this is wrong or anything. If it works for you and you get a good sound and it isn't doing any damage to your fingers or your hands or your wrists, then go ahead and use this technique. This isn't like some kind of technique fail or mistake, it's just different. Now that being said, there are two downsides of using more of a rock slap technique. First is with your muting. Now with the other technique, the muting of your unwanted strings is kind of semi-baked in. If you played your E string with the other technique, you'd kind of follow through to your A string and then it's not going to ring, right? If this A string is ringing and then we play a good old slap on the E string and follow through, it's going to stop that from ringing at all. Now that's not the case with the rock slap technique though. If you're not precise or at least careful with your slapping hand, you can get this, you know? Hitting the a E string and bouncing off, but you know, also getting a little bit of the A string ring as well. But you can fix that by either using the fretting hand uh, to mute your unwanted strings, so down here. So if I just mute all my strings up here, it's not gonna matter if I, you know, hit the A string a little bit because it's just gonna be muted. The other thing you can try and do is just be super precise with your slapping. So E string, A string, D string, G string. Yeah, you can get pretty good at that as well. Ideally, in a perfect world, you get pretty good at doing both uh, with your muting and, you know, building your slap precision. Uh, and if you do need a lesson specifically about muting, I'll put a link to one in the video description. 
Now, also, the other thing with the rock slap technique is you kind of cut yourself off from doing uh, double thumbing, which is a slightly more advanced slap technique, where instead of bouncing off the string like this, you follow through, and then on the way back up again, your thumb gets another note out of a single motion. Yeah, so down, up. Yeah, now, again, uh, you get another note out of a single motion, but if you're using the rock slap technique, there isn't really any way to do that at all. Uh, you just can't follow through because it just kills the note. Yeah, there's just no way of doing it. But if learning to double thumb doesn't really matter to you, you don't have to use it. You can stick with your rock slap technique. Uh, if you do want to learn, I guess, the more standard slap technique and maybe see just which one is more comfortable for you, which one you like the sound of the most, then I do have another video where I walk you through that whole process and you can check that out right here. And if you want the tabs for the higher ground bass line in this video, you can get it at this link or check it in the description as well. So I'll see you in there.